Welcome from the Goggle Docs. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to give an update uh, on the latest happenings as far as kidney disease is concerned uh, in people both living with and without type 2 diabetes. And in the last year, we've seen a lot happen in that field in terms of scientific data and evidence from trials and studies, but also from guidelines as well. Uh, and in fact, if we start with the international scene, uh, I'm going to head over to you, Patrick. Uh, we've had a bit of a, an update from Kadigo and ADA, haven't we? Yeah, so for the first time, we've got ADA and Kadigo working together in this consensus guideline, and it updates the Kadigo 2020 uh, guidance. So and, and it, it, it's, we've got a new pyramid now. For those people who are used to those guidance, there was an old one. There's a new one now. But uh, as a, the uh, uh, foundation is intensive lifestyle intervention, but there's something new, and that's weight in there. And then in terms of first line drug therapy, uh, we've got metformin and SGLT2 inhibitors for, for hypertension using RASI blockade and statins for all because of that, those raised cardiovascular risk. And then um, goal directed therapy where it's needed. So GLP-1 receptor agonists now for uh, uh, dysglycemia and, and actually non-steroidal MRA, something new uh, for residual albuminuria. And Amri, I believe... There's uh, one of these non steroidal MRAs have now got a UK license. Yeah, absolutely. Quite exciting, actually, because we have a medication that was principally um, developed for kidney disease. Uh, so not a medication used in another area, which is then being adopted for kidney disease. And this is phenerenone. So as you said, a non steroidal MRA. Um, and it has just recently got approval from the MHRA for use in patients with kidney disease stage three or four with albuminuria uh, associated with type two diabetes. So, so quite exciting. Uh, we know that in America, uh, they had that license uh, approved uh, over a year ago, around a year ago. So there is a good experience there of using it. And it's off the back of the Fidelio DKD trial that saw phenerenone being used in these patients. And we saw you know, really impressive results in terms of the renal uh, composite outcome there for patients. We're expecting later in the year, come around August, to have the, the nice technical appraisal. So we'll be giving you an update again, I'm sure, around then. But again, as you said, uh, Patrick, an, an adjunct to therapy to patients who've already been initiated on those first line treatments. Um, but we've also got some, some other exciting news in terms of trial data, haven't we, Amma, in terms of Empikidney? Yeah, that's right. Um, so we, we know SGLT2 inhibitors, as, as Patrick has mentioned, that are the mainstay of a lot of treatments in CKD as well, on top of ACE and ARBs. Um, we have canagliflozin and dapagliflozin, which have had evidence for that. So always the question has been about empagliflozin. When is that, you know, where's that evidence coming from? And this is the trial Empikidney, which is looking at empagliflozin in those with chronic kidney disease. Um, with or without type 2 diabetes, uh, a, lot of, a number of other things as well. And we've got headline data, or headline news really, saying that um, the Independent Data Monitoring Committee for that trial of the kidney uh, has suggested that the trial be stopped early due to the, you know, the overwhelming benefits seen in those people who are on the uh, epigliflozin arm of that, which indicates that actually, you know, epigliflozin has joined the, uh, joined the other SGLT2 inhibitors in, in, in kidney disease. But there are a few interesting things with the kidney trial that we should be, to be aware of, really. Firstly, it's, um, it's looking at a slightly uh, lower EGFR population. So about, about a third of the people who were in epigliflozin had an EGFR less than 30. And uh, in terms of urine ACRs, again, a, a large number of people, just under 50% or so, had a urine ACR less than 30 milligrams per millimole or 300 milligrams per gram, depending on which uh, units you use. Um, and also less than half had diabetes, uh, had diabetes as well. So compared to the previous trials, we're having uh, even, we could say, a generalizable and uh, not so advanced CKD population in the kidney, which will you know, really have potential, more impact than the others. Uh, we'll see what the data shows, but you know, that's something I'm really excited to see uh, what is shown. Uh, and, and where it fits in guidelines, to be honest. Now, we can't really talk about guidelines without knowing where we are at the moment, which is uh, where Kevin's going to come in now, aren't you, Kevin, and ask and let us know about uh, what's happening there. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Yeah, a, lot, a lot's been happening, hasn't it, with guidelines in terms of CKD. So last August, NICE actually updated their CKD guideline uh, and gave us a clear nod towards getting the basics right, of course. So for those adults living with type 2 diabetes, uh, with a urinary ACR over three milligrams per millimole, we need to, of course, offer an ACE inhibitor or ARB. 
But then they also said, if that urinary ACR is over 30, we should also offer an SGLT2 inhibitor, consistent with the evidence that uh, Amas discussed and, and uh, other previous evidence. Then that guideline was further updated in November of, of last year, uh, which added a further recommendation to consider an SGLT2 inhibitor on top of standard of care, so ACE inhibitor or ARB, uh, or ARB uh, in an adult living with type 2 diabetes if urinary ACR was between 3 and 30, so those lower levels. Uh, of course, making sure that the criteria uh, in the license is met for the SGLT2 in question. So big changes there, big approach to how we use SGLT2 inhibitors. Then we had the UK Kidney Association guidelines published, which of course, Patrick was one of the, the co-authors, which is fantastic. So that the UK, KA, UK Kidney Association was previously known as the Renal Association. Many of you might recognize uh, that, uh, that name. So they produced new guidelines in October of last year uh, about SGLT2 inhibitor use in adults with kidney disease. And again, some big new recommendations, but I'm gonna focus on recommendations for people without uh, type two diabetes. So actually, the UK KA guidelines are recommending SGLT2 inhibitors in people without type 2 diabetes with a urinary ACR of greater than 25, uh, with exceptions of people living with polycystic kidney disease or those on immunological therapy for their, their kidney disease. So again, big change, the use of SGLT2 inhibitors even in people uh, without type 2 diabetes. And actually that segued very nicely with a very recent update from NICE. They did a, a technological appraisal on dapagliflozin, which was just published on the 9th of March uh, earlier this month. Again, looking at the role of dapagliflozin specifically for treating chronic kidney disease in adults. And what this uh, TA recommended is we should consider dapagliflozin as an option for treating CKD, again, as add-on to standard of care. So we've got to get the basics right, the highest tolerated dose of an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. But then if that individual has an EGFR between 25 to 75 and either has type 2 diabetes or has a urinary ACR of greater than 22.6, we can use dapagliflozin to reduce the progression of that chronic kidney disease. So again, a nod towards using an SGLT2 inhibitor, again, in this uh, context, dapagliflozin, both with and without uh, type 2 diabetes in the context of significant uh, albuminuria. So a lot going on, Amrit, isn't there, in the world of kidney disease? It's going to be a lot for us to digest in primary care, certainly, certainly with my a GP hat on. So it's going to take a, a while for people to build up their confidence about using this class of drug. But exciting times, you know, as Amaz told me, Emper Kidney's been uh, terminated early because of overwhelming benefits. So I know you've heard me say this before, but certainly this class of drug, uh, in my opinion, has been the biggest therapeutic advance in my career to date since I graduated in, in, in 2000. Uh, and we're using it in a much wider range of clinical scenarios. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. Uh, and I think uh, you, you, you put it there quite nicely. So much is happening. Uh, it's now a case of us absorbing all of this and, and trying to put it into practice. But very exciting. Updated guidelines, extended licenses for SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, and new therapeutic options in terms of finerenone as well. So just like London buses, nothing comes around for, for kidney disease for so many years. No new therapies, no new therapeutic options. Uh, for over 20 years, and now we have a couple on the go. So really exciting, um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you some more information over the coming weeks and months as this all develops and, uh, and, and gets put into practice. But for the moment, uh, we hope we've given you a nice summary of, uh, of the, the latest goings on in this field. But for now, that's all from us. Do follow us on Twitter to carry on the debate and the discussion and our other social media platforms as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you soon. Bye.